So this is the XGA, the XMOS timing analysis tool. And briefly, this works because of the unique deterministic nature of the XMOS architecture, because we don't have any caches and branch prediction and so on. It basically means that we can time statically between two points in the program, and we'll know what the worst case could be. So now we're gonna move on and look at timing between two endpoints. So in this example here, we have two endpoints. Endpoints are typically I.O. instructions. So in this case, we have the endpoint one, which is an input, and endpoint two, which is another input. And we want to find the worst case time between these two endpoints. The first thing we need to do is load this up into the XTA. This takes us into the XTA perspective. We next set the, the from endpoint, which is the start, and then we set the to endpoint, which is the end of the analysis. We perform the analysis then we get the results. So in the roots view on the left hand side here we can show it shows a tree like structure and this is basically a, a representation of the structure of the program with the worst and best case times annotated on that tree. In the, in the bottom visualization pane here we get a similar, it's slightly different view but it conveys similar information. Also in this example here we have a loop in the middle so we might want to tell the tool how many times it iterates around that loop so we can easily do this just by right clicking and setting a number of loop iterations. In this case there's 10. So now we're going to move on and show how you can time a function. So you might want to time a function typically if it's maybe a DSP function you just want to see how long a particular function our algorithm takes to run. So this is very easy. In this case, we want to time the function f, and we can just go to a little drop down at the top. We can click on the function, and it will time it, and it will show the exact same information again in the root view and the visualization. Again, we can perform any annotations, such as adding loop counts afterwards. The final mode you can use the XTA is in a scriptable sense. So this is useful when you want to construct a script. You've identified all your timing requirements, and you want to put it in the script, pass the script to the compiler such that it can be rerun every time you change your code in the future and that means you know you're never breaking your timing properties of the program. So in this case we constructed a little script, we want a time between the two endpoints, that's the analyze command, we set the loop count, we set a requirement and then we print the summary. So if we go back to the edit perspective we can see if this script lives in the, the same directory as the application. When we rebuild the application um, you should see, ah, there we go, so the XTA gets called and you can see the output from the XTA as part of the compilation process.